Yes. All the parents are requested to go to the room number B triple one. They can see the live telecast from the room B triple one.
ऑनरेबल डीओजी चेयरमैन डायरेक्टर सर गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर डॉक्टर अनिल का कोतकर एंड अदर स्कॉलर्स आर एंट्रिंग इन द ऑडिटोरियम All of you are requested to stand up at your places till scholars occupy their seats on the dais. All the respected BOG members and senior members are requested to take their seat on the dais, please. Thank you. Please be seated. I request the honourable BOG chairman sir to permit the to start the degree distribution ceremony. BOG chairman sir is requested to give the PhD degrees. Dean Academic Affairs is kindly requested to read the names of the PhD degree recipients to call them on stage one by one. PhD degree awardees are requested to come on the stage when their names are called one at a time. So I just present here the PhD awardees. Miss Neelam Arya. Her PhD thesis title is Energy Efficient VLSI Architectures Using Approximate Computing Techniques for the Multimedia Applications. And her supervisors were Professor G K Sharma and Professor Manisha Patnai. The second PhD degree recipient is Ms. Sneha Upadhyay. Her thesis title is Dope, Phosphorus and Antimonane Nanosort Nanosheet as the Anode Material for NA Oil Battery. And his, her supervisor is Professor Pankaj Shivaspa. The third PhD degree recipient is Monika Shivasto. Her PhD thesis title is Computational Investigations of Nanostructured Materials as Sensors for the Carcinogenic Elements in Water and Air. And her supervisor is Professor A. Srivastava. <laughs> the next PhD degree recipient is Mr. Vijay Shankar Sarma. His thesis title is Study of Bifurcation, Resonance, and Control in Discrete Time Ecological Systems. And super, his supervisor is Dr. Anurag Singh. The next PhD recipient is Mr. Maibhav Agrawal. His PhD thesis title is Efficient Data Acquisition Mechanisms for the IoT Enabled Wireless Sensor Networks. And his supervisors are Professor S. Tapaswi and Dr. P. Chana. The next PhD recipient is Mr. Vikram Garg. His thesis title is Cooperative Multi Robot Target Searching and Tracking Using Nature Inspired Algorithms. And his PhD supervisors are Professor Anupam Shukla and Dr. Ritu Tiwari. The next PhD degree recipient is Mr. Kumar Gaurav. His PhD thesis title is Computational Investigations of One-Dimensional Nanomaterials Based Spintronic Devices 
for the multifunctional applications and his supervisor is Professor Anurag Shivastri. Apart, apart from these seven PhD recipients, two more PhD recipients are also there. However, they could not make it here to the function. So we just read their names in absentia. So the first one among the absentia is Ms. Pragya Rabat and her thesis title is Exploration of Circular Bioeconomy Antecedents, a Multi-Perspective Empirical and Conceptual Study of Circular Organisms in Case of Developing Circular. And her PhD supervisors are Dr. Vinay Singh and Dr. Vishal Vyas. And the next one being given in absentia is Sonal Agrawal. And her thesis title is Computational Synthesis of One-Dimensional Narrow Structures for the Interconnect and the Sensing Applications. And her PhD supervisors are Prof. Anurag Srivastava and Dr. Gaurav Kaushal. Thanks. Again, I request Dean of Academic Affairs to kindly read the name of the MTIC and MBA degree recipient to call them on the stage one by one. MTIC and MBA degree awardees are requested to come on the stage when their names are called one at a time. So first I call on the names of the MTIC degree recipients in the discipline of computer networks. So Jay Kumar Vagaria. Mr. Sudipta Roy, sorry, Miss Sudipta Roy, Mr. Yash Agrawal, Mr. V. Krishna Viswanathan, Apart from these four MTech Computer Networks degree holders, there are six more uh, students who got the degree in MTech Computer Networks, MTech in Computer Networks, and they are uh, Kishan Singh, Lakshya Saxena, Riya Sharma, Sachindra Pandey, Sude Dev Chaturvedi, and Pranjal Tiwari. However, they could not make it here, so we are conferring the degree in absentia. Now I just go and present the degree recipients in the MTech Information Security. So the first one I call Mr. Aswani Kumar Padi. Next is Mr. Mayan Mishra. Then Nipani Shri. Then Sanjay, sorry, Sanya Tukreja. Next is Mr. Vineet Soni.
then Mr. Mrityunjay Rao. Apart from Apart from these six degree recipients who are present here, uh, there are more seven degree recipients who could not make it here and they are being conferred the degree of the MTech Information City in Absentia. I just read their name one by one. The Adit R. Sethi, Nishan Singh Parihar, Nitin Kesri, Pratik Kumar Soni, Raghavendra Singh, Sai Kiran Gumidi and Shalini. Next, I present the MTech degree recipients in the VLI and VLSI and the embedded system. Now I present Mushir Ulha. There are two more degree recipients in the MTEC VLSI and embedded systems. However, they could not make it here. So I just read their names in their absentia. And they are the Shivam Gupta and Siddhar Singh Upadhyay. After that, I present the MBA degree recipients. The first one is Aditi Singhal. Then Ruchi Sender. The next is Soumya Pachak. And the fourth and last in this list of the MBA degree recipients is Mr. Vikas Chauhan. is kindly requested to read the names of the integrated MTA degree recipients to call them on stage one by one. IMT degree awardees are requested to come on the stage when their names are called one at a time. Now first I call Adit Agrawal. Ashish Bhupen Katri. Asta Jain. Abhay Chaurasiya.
जय प्रकाश पीपली बाल अमल कुमार जेटी ने अंजलि बहुरी अंकित मौर्य दीक्षा अग्रवाल ध्रुवल कुशवाहा जतिन के संतोष महालक्ष्मी
के मल्लिकार्जुन मेधावी श्रीवास्तव एम डब्ल्यू जिले मुगल शर्मा
Shaki, Shivasta. Sachin Tiwari. Sana Gandhi. Saurabh Singh Sikarwal. Sayantan Benerji. Shivam Agrawal. Shivam Soni. Siddhan Paikru. Swatik Poon. E.K. Vijay. Mushal Kumar. Vivek Kambuch. Now the following degree recipients could not make it here today because of some reason, but their names are recorded in the degree register. Therefore, they are being provided with a degree in absentia. So their names are as follows: Akar Shivastar, Abhishek Pratap Singh, Afroz Kureshi, Ethi Gupta, Akash Parma, Amit Kumar, Anand Verma, Arpit Mishra. Ashri Gupta, Vipin Patak, Divyansh Kumar Singh, Harsh Valya, Jadav Prathviraj, Madhu Chandrapi, Mitlesh Kumar, Nakul Shahadapuri, N.S. Siva Srinivas, Nikhil Chaudhary, Pankaj Singh, Pritam Chakravarti, Priyansh Rastugi, Rachit Gar, Rahul Dole, Sanskar Rathor, Saurabh Kumar, Shreya Gupta, Shweta Chaurasiya, Odit Singh, Yogesh Kishore Mishram, Anshita Sharma, B. Vishnu Yashwant, Koteshar Rao, Shivakant Dev. Thank you, sir. Head Management Studies is kindly requested to read the name of the BTEC plus MBA degree recipient to call them on the histories one by one. IMG BTEC plus MBA degree awardees are requested to come on the stage when their names are called one at a time. Now I call Abhishek Kumar. Ajit Singh Chauhan.
and need to अंजलि घंटोलिया अनुज बांगर आयुष कटिया आयुष राय भनोत महेंद्र बुक्के श्रीनिवास सुलु नायक दिव्यांश कुमार हर्षल हसवंत राव चौहान मानसी मीना मोहित कुमार मोची नीलावर विनीत अरुण पीयूष चेतवानी प्रशांत द्विवेदी प्रवर मुंद्रा पुष्कर परंजपे रचित गोयल राहुल देव राहुल मित्तल राशि गुप्ता ऋषभ अग्रवाल ऋषभ कुमार 
शिखर गोस्वामी शिंदे वैष्णव शिवम भास्कर शिवम यादव शिवेश त्रिवाई सिद्धार्थ वर्मा यश अग्रवाल Sir, the following degree recipient could not make it here today for some reason, but their names are recorded in the degree register. Therefore, they are being provided with a degree in absentia. Names of these students are Ayush Singh, Abhyanand Kumar, Allah Jai Shri Asha, Amit Kumar Sharma, Ankit Kumar, Ankit Kumar, Anmol Shrivastav, Asok Kumar Meena. आयुष कुमार पांडे चिरंजीव अग्रवाल धर्मेंद्र सिंह हर्ष वर्मा कमल गर्ग मनीष गांधी प्रतीक वर्मा 
प्रिंस मेनवाल प्रथुल राज रचित गुप्ता ऋषु कुमार सरोज कुमार सौरभ प्रकाश गिरी शिवांश तुषार गुहा नियोगी वर्षा बेनीवाल वेदांत त्रिपाठी विद्या संघु दुबे एंड रमावतु नीलाया नायक थैंक यू सर नाउ हेड ऑफ सी एस सी डिपार्टमेंट इज काइंडली रिक्वेस्टेड टू रीड द नेम्स ऑफ द बी टेक डिग्री रेसिपियंट्स टू कॉल देम ऑन स्टेज वन बाय वन बी टेक सी एस सी डिग्री अवार्डीज आर रिक्वेस्टेड टू कम ऑन द स्टेज वेन देयर नेम्स आर कॉल्ड वन एट ए टाइम विदेश स्टूडेंट्स अदिति सिंह आदित्य अमन गोयल अनिकेश शर्मा अनुराग पटेल आशुतोष परमार दसारी जयंत देवादित्य पाल चौधरी 
Kissler Singh. Category for now. Nanam Anume. Nikhil Kumar Gupta. शशांक राजू रौनक कुमार रवि चोपड़ा शुभम श्रीकांत पाटिल सियासी स्वागत 
पी जियाला लक्ष्मी उत्सव वर्मा वी सत्या पवन कल्याण विभोर शर्मा युवान सिंह कार्तिक शुक्ला कार्तिक देवेश कृष्णा बी गांधी प्राप्ति जगुवंशी शौर्य बंसल शौर्य मान सिंह अनुष्का जयप्रकाश सिंह Some of the degree recipients could not make it here today for some reason, but their names are recorded in degree register. Therefore, they are being provided to the degree in absentia. Their names are Amandeep, Amit Raman, Bhumi Sethi Mahesh, Chaitanya Reddy, Arsh Goswami, Jay Parish Kumar Patel, Nithin Kumar Reddy. टीवी दुर्गा साई किरण पराग पोदार प्राकुल कंडन रोहित कुमार वर्मा सचिन चैतु टोपा शिवाजी कुमार शिवम दोहरे शुभम गंगवार श्वेता कुमारी सिंह थारी जफानिया विकास उपेंद्र नाथ पांडे विष्णु अग्रवाल अशोक अरोरा एंड तुषार सहवाल Thank you. Thank you, sir. Head IT department is kindly requested to read the names of BTEC degree recipients to call them one on the stage, one by one. BTEC IT degree awardees are requested to come on the stage when their names are called one on a part of time. Please come on the screen. D Y Namdev.
ਫਾਇਦਾ ਵੀ ਅਗਰਵਾਲ the following degree recipients could not make it here today for some reason but their names are recorded in the degree register therefore they are being provided with a degree in absentia their names are as follows krishnakant tiwari pankaj kumar sen thanks let the record of the degrees be presented to the chairperson for the signing please start please thank you sir now honorable bog chairman sir is requested to kindly exhort it or diksho upadesh to the students receiving the degree all the students are requested to stand up at their respective places to pitch the five record card utar lena so thank you very much students and my heartiest congratulations to you all and remember that your knowledge and intellectual attainment is the most sacred wealth of the nation you shall therefore use it in a manner befitting the honor and dignity of your country and of your alma mater you should make every effort in all circumstances to uphold the dignity of your profession and integrity of your character you shall endeavor in every way through thought word action to bring about well being of people you must live a well disciplined life never forget the commandment of the sacred scriptures thank you this is in your case thank you sir now i request dr anil kakutkar ji to give the blessing words to the degree recipients distinguished guys dear students ladies and gentlemen first of, first of all let me use this opportunity to once again congratulate all of you those who have received their degrees today their parents the teachers and more importantly those who have been specially recognized by way of award of medal or such other commendation uh this convocation is somewhat unique for me i have attended many many convocations believe me but I have attended convocations where I have received degrees. I have attended convocations where I have been presenting degrees. But this is the only convocation where both the things have happened to me together. I received a degree. And I will remember this convocation all in my life. I know. for you this is a moment of celebration and convocation is a day when they say that you know, you know this is the day when the teachers give the last sermon to students because this is the last chance they would get now being aware of uh, this both in my student days 
and also as a part of somebody who has been attending convocation, I promise you that I won't take too long. So, but I want to talk to you on some important aspect. And uh, so having got this uh, opportunity, I want to use this occasion to talk to you about higher education in our country. Basically, higher education in a country like India, for example, should aim at building human capability at multiple levels. Let me narrate three levels. Then we all talk about human resource development. And then when you talk about that, you talk, talk about multiple levels. But I'll focus on three important layers. First, take learners all the way up to the current frontiers of knowledge in areas of interest to students, not to teachers. Engage in research to push these frontiers forward and be in the forefront in delivering cutting-edge technologies emerging out of such knowledge, the knowledge at the forefront. That's the first layer. The second layer, build world-class professionals in the practice of state of our technologies and contribute to the welfare of humankind and protecting the ecology as well as the environment around. Very important. And the third, pay attention to capability building of people at the grassroots through knowledge empowerment to bridge the disparity gaps which seem to be growing even as more wealth is created. Rural areas need much greater attention in this context. Now, I think you could recognize that these three layers are very distinctive. And it's, according to me, an incomplete mission of a higher education institution if they talk about only one layer and not others. Because I think a country like India, of course, as I said, there could be other layers, but as a minimum, you must focus on these three layers. While pursuing this path, we should also ensure inculcation of a deeper understanding of human values through association and practice. You know, we hear a lot of preaching, but that evaporates within hours, sometimes within days. So this question about to values, inculcation of values, and to make that happen in a more permanent way, association and practice are in fact more important. And those, you know, this association practice, not in, in general, but preferably related to applications in different specialized areas one is working on. You, know, you may be working on different areas. So, what are the values relevant to that area or relevant to what contribution you can make to the society in leveraging that specialization? And that is where you must be able to inculcate values through association and practice. Inculcation of such values to leverage acquired capability for the overall human and nature's benefit without being exploitative. It's very important, you know. In general, once you get empowered, there is a higher chance of exploitation. But without being exploitative, that is the key for sustainable progress and should be one of the key objectives of higher education institutions. To be effective in this context, our knowledge institutions have to be both knowledge creators as well as value creators and inculcate such an aptitude and capability in our students through broad-based learning and practice environment. 
in the context of knowledge creation, we should note that today India is in the third position globally in terms of our scientific publication record with perhaps the fastest growth rate. So we are doing quite well in terms of knowledge creation. Maybe there is always scope for uh, doing better. When there is scope to improve further, both in terms of quantity as well as quality, particularly across the full spectrum of institutions in the country, we have to cover a much larger ground in the context of value creation. Knowledge creation is one, but value creation. As an extreme case for us to emulate, I would like to cite the example of Stanford University, whose alumni and faculty have created nearly 40,000 companies, single universities, that generate around US dollar 2.7 trillion annually in revenue, annual revenues. Now, and there are, Stanford is not the only one, there are other, MIT, Harvard, there are universities who do this. Notice that this number relates to a single university and is around the size of India's economy as a whole. How many universities we have in India? So we should have the ambition of taking India to the, the commensurate commensurate level. We need to create such ecosystem in our universities. And we have made some beginning. The research park at IIT Madras is a good beginning in India in this direction. More such examples are in the making, but we need many, many more such initiatives. We are now in an era dominated by high-end technologies like semiconductors, artificial intelligence, computing and telecom, clean energy, advanced aerospace and pharmaceuticals. All familiar names for you. But very soon, new knowledge frontiers exploiting genetics, quantum physics, cognitive and brain sciences and such other new areas would start dominating. We need to quickly close in the expanding gaps between us and the countries advancing rapidly in technologies emerging from these disciplines. Not being able to do so would not only put us at disadvantage but could in fact make us vulnerable to emergence of new technology denial regimes, even in commercial sectors. Mind my words, and this has been happening in the past and there is every chance that this would happen going forward. And if this happens, that would hold hostage an entire segments of our nation's economy. And we don't want that to happen. We thus must quickly become a massive producer of high-end frontier technologies, and that requires a well-knit research entrepreneurship ecosystem involving a close triple helix partnership between academia, industry, and the government, which is very critical necessity for this purpose. This is a necessity for our national security, for our economic prosperity, and our social, societal well-being. Now that is at one end. As we prepare ourselves to be in the forefront of emerging high technologies and be a front runner in the global competition, which we must, we need to be also aware of the need to quickly bridge the growing disparity gaps, as I said earlier, within the country that are becoming, becoming a matter of concern. is the urban-rural gap. We can describe these gaps in various ways, but the urban-rural gap, if you address, you will address many of them together. 
nearly two thirds of India, this is of course uh, 2011 census, but it's around that number, even today, mark perhaps. So, nearly two thirds of India still lived in villages with less than half average per capita income as compared to urban areas. Bridging the urban rural divide is thus a matter of urgent necessity in our country. The emerging era of knowledge driven economy that facilitates democratization and decentralization of technology led economic activities is thus a great opportunity for transformation of rural horizon that could bridge the urban rural divide and contribute to a major boost to Indian economy. If you just work it out, it will, it will not only become twice, but much more. This, however, would involve capacity building of local people through education and training in dealing with emerging technologies and also ability to internalize them, including solving of problems in using or implementing these technologies as they arise. Eventually, we should create a self-empowered and locally relevant innovation ecosystem that can leverage the opportunities of the knowledge era. And that's a new, no, because our mindset is still industrial era, urbanization is bound to happen. But that is actually, not, no, we are now in knowledge era and we need to, we need to look at it uh, in, 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 diff, in quite differently. So, in principle, I believe that in the contemporary knowledge era, one could have greater opportunities in villages than in cities. Think about this, reversing the industrial era paradigms. In this context, the universities or institutions can be instrumental in setting up what I describe as a silage, a knowledge integrated, sustainable village development model that aims to leverage new and appropriate knowledge-based technologies, including some created locally, to create additional and higher level livelihoods, not just doubling farmers income, much more than that. In, the, in villages that also include manufacturing and service sector activities, in addition to agriculture and allied activities. And all of you here at Triple IT, I think are excellently placed to realize this. You know, service sector constitutes 50% of our economy. And I see no reason why the youth only from cities should contribute to that. And where the country has reaped rich harvest in terms of economy leveraging IT. Should we not do that? in IT plus all these new sectors. And you can do that in all the three segments of economy, but at least in service sector, if you can leverage both urban and rural youth, you can imagine that the day is not far off when you can equate rural income with urban income. So rural in fact can in fact be a little higher. And also, through being in the forefront of technologies, you can equate the best of India with the best in the world. And that is what will make the country strong. The countries become strong essentially on the basis of their distinctive technologies. Done first time ever ahead of anybody else. And I think that is what all of you can do. So let me urge you to kind of get on that path. And it, it doesn't matter where you are, whatever you are doing, you can still do this in a manner that you can contribute to a rapid rise in India's economy, the quality of life of a common Indian, and India becoming an advanced country in true sense. You know, Dr. Kalam used to say, actually his ambition or dream as used to call 
was to see India as a developed country in 2020. That may pass three years ago. And I suggest to you that let us at least make a resolve that by 2047, when India will complete 100 years, we will achieve that objective of India becoming among the advanced countries of the world. Uh, and let's not miss this bus this time. And it is, of course, for all of you. Wish you good luck and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much for your blessing and guidance. Now, I request Director Sir to present the memento to Dr. Anil Kapoor Kurji, which is the symbol of honor and respect. At the end of the program, I request Director Sir to have the vote of thanks to all of people, ladies and gentlemen and dignitaries present here. Uh, certainly it was a very hectic day for you as well. You can just remember uh, you are, I think, uh, longest convocation for very limited people here. And uh, if you're inviting a big dignitaries, and the two aspects, one is good things, something bad things as well. A lot of, I think, troubles you have faced because your directions, routines, everything, and many times security persons. Even though I was not entering, I used the CO vehicle to go to the city in the student service. My vehicle was also stopped. But this is an honor for us. They instituted this ensued perceptions, and that basically is a glory which we have started. I always try something new wherever I am, like now here, earlier also I tried. But certain things are, uh, of course, not always successful. Especially, I believe this year we tried your earliest, Safa. And I thought nobody is weird. <laughs> so I think we should discontinue this session again. Yeah, some more suggestions will come. We'll see. So one feedback form will be going right honestly, not in the very light mood, very seriously, and give the suggestions, we can follow that. That is a very, very true because always we have to scope and learn. Please don't talk. I think please listen. Whenever this we ask to talk, you never talk. So it is it is a very serious matter because we try for your benefit. This year we added this year headgear so that we can have something good caps earlier to us not because some small guys were there and did it. So then we tried to let us have because many institutions are having many issues. So no issue. Next year we'll see something else and that's why we need your suggestion. But always I thank the BOG chairman. Whenever I ask something, whenever I just ask some guidance, he is always on that. Even though during the date fixing, he was in Kenya. I think he was on holiday, I guess. Then his mobile was not traceable. How to take the dates? Because, you know, a person who is still behind all the cars from the district administration, from the government, from the president house, and the ministry. And everyone is just, you know, they are having there's funds in just in front of me. Because I have to do this, I have to do this. Even though the stage is changed at 11 here this night. This leg is done, the third was just, it was 11 o'clock, it was changed. You can see what a tension and harconian task is there to organize any business. So if anything's inconvenience to you, I regret it. And I will try to improve. 
I am certainly this institution is not only run by one person, it is run is by all of you. All of you I say, my fellow members, the staff members, I you are the most valuable asset for this institution. Since you got after your hard work, you got the degrees. You are the you always welcome here. Now you become earlier you are a student, now you are my alumnus. I am always think this is your alma mater. Wherever you require the help of this institution, wherever you require help from this institution, we should always come forward and help each other. So thank you, our BOG chairman. This Anil Kartmanski. I decided that we should go for connecting the big people, those have they can bless us, they can connect us, and they can also give a lot of things to us. And we decided this year we have to give this. Manadhupad Jisko Bolte and Doctor of Science, Henri Kauja. I approached Anil Kakubadar Ji. He very kindly agreed for this. And my board of governors approved. Of course, the recommendation came from the senior. And we must be honored. Now he has also become our alumnus. So you alumnus, he is also alumnus. Although we have to take a lot of things from him. So thank you, sir, for your acceptance. Thank you for being here. And this is our experience today. Thanks goes to all my senators, faculty members. They work day and night, day and night. And especially, I should not miss the name of the two persons. One is your coordinator, and another is Sumesh Kumar. He is a deputy coordinator. No doubt, you will be calling, you will be writing, you are doing and running here and there. I'm sure he did the untireless effort to make this program as successful as possible. And to thank you all, my other staff members. And these guardians, they came all the way. We wanted they should witness, but we are having the limitations of this auditorium. But I sure, not sure, because sometimes once I say sure, it never happens. So, but next year we'll have the convocation in the 1500 capacity auditorium. So all the guests in the So there's no limitations, nothing, so that you can bring your. And the guardians, they wanted to witness. And that's no doubt we could not accommodate. Again, sorry for this. Whatever the capacity you can say it is full, we try to sell this. So now this is a, once again, wish you all the best. Thank you very much to all of you, to all of my senators, BOZ, and faculty, deans, and heads. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All the students and ladies and gentlemen, present in the auditorium will be seated at your respective place till the procession of the scholars leave the ceremony hall. All the degree recipients and their family members are requested to have the high tea at the ground floor of Block B Invited guests, faculty, and staff members are requested to have high tea at ground floor of administrative building. Yeah, my head